Alright, so now we are going to install CentOS, uh, CentOS. <clears throat> um, this is, yeah, so this is pretty basic. Um, basically, so you're going to download CentOS from Amir. So come here. For your uh, host system, for your physical machine, you know, come to downloads, uh, public mirror list, and it's going to have all these, you know, states, Missouri, Michigan, Maryland, Massachusetts, and so on. Choose the state that's closest to you. I'm in Oregon, so here's Oregon, Portland State University, that's right down the street, so there we go. Choose 6.3. And for your desktop, get, if you are got a 64-bit machine, come in here. If you've got a 32-bit machine, come in here. Uh, and get uh, get this one. The, no, no, not this one, sorry. Get this one right here. That's all you need. This 4.5 gig DVD, okay? Or if you're a 32-bit, get this one right here okay burn that to a CD or put it on a USB key or whatever you're going to be doing and uh, however you're going to be installing it and uh, put it in your computer and boot up and this is the menu you're going to get if you boot off your CD or if you boot off your USB key <clears throat> or whatever okay so let's install so we install just hit enter Oh, just spilled coffee all over my shirt. <laughs> so it's loading up the installer. Nothing too, too much to see here. This, if you decide to test your media, you could have installed twice. So skip. And... Here we go. So it's starting the installer. And the first thing it wants us to do, it wants us to know what we're installing. Just in case you thought you were installing DOS. So CentOS 6, next. Choose your language. Should be pretty self-explanatory. English. Choose your keyboard layout. Okay, US English. Uh, if you are installing to a SAN device, highly unlikely you would choose this. Um, if you know you're installing to a hard drive inside of your computer, just choose basic storage device. Hit next. Um, this, you know, most likely will not pop up for you, but uh, it pops up because I'm using a blank, unpartitioned, and a virtual drive. So I'm just going to discard any data. Yes. Uh, this system, it's going to be your host, so name it host.noob2admin.com. Click configure network. I'm connected, uh, I'm plugged in, connected, I have a wired connection. Um, so I'm going to edit this, my wired adapter here, and I'm going to hit edit, and I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to say connect automatically. Okay? apply. If you're connected wirelessly, you can select that and hit edit and it should give you options for uh, configuring your wireless. So configure your network, but the main thing is, is hit connect automatically. Okay, so next. Choose your time zone. I'm in Pacific Standard. Next. Type in a root password. Make it something that you can remember. Next. <clears throat> OK. So here's where we can go different ways. Um, if you're doing a dual boot, uh, actually, you know what? I'll make a video for dual boot. So this is basically, I don't have to worry about you doing a dual boot. We're going to create a custom layout and hit Next. So I got a 12 gig drive on here. 
Um, if you have a, say, a 100 gig drive, um, you know what, actually, uh, doesn't really matter. Just hit uh, Create. Select your drive and hit Create. Standard partition uh, slash boot and 200 megabytes, that's fine, and hit OK. So I got a 200 megabyte boot partition. Come down to the free here. Standard partition slash my root partition and I want to have a um, I've got 12 gigs so I want a swap drive since I only have I think 768 megs of RAM on this uh, machine so 10 gigs of, uh, of um, space for my root partition that's that's sufficient okay and finally I'm going to create standard partition the file system type we're going to make this one a swap and we are going to say fill to maximum allowable size basically use the rest of the space and hit OK and so boot 200 megabytes your root partition the majority of your space and a 2 gig swap and hit next if you have 8 gigs of RAM you don't necessarily need to swap but you know this uh, this machine has 768 megabytes of RAM so it's nice to have a swap uh, if you have, say, gig of RAM, do a 2 gig swap. If you have 512 megs of RAM, do a 1 gig swap. Roughly about that. Okay, hit next. And then hit format. And write the changes to disk. Okay. Now we're going to want to install the bootloader and that's perfectly fine right there. We're not doing a dual boot, so here we go. Hit next. And we want a minimal desktop. Not really worried about uh, customizing any of the packages. We'll just go with a minimal desktop. Hit next. And it's going to grab all the packages that need to be installed. And it's going to start the installation process. Depending on your computer, this should take probably about 15, 15 minutes or so. So it's just basically grabbing all the packages. There's 924 of them, and it's installing Linux right now. So there is that, and we will. Yeah, so let that go. Okay, so it's going to sit at this point for, yeah, a few minutes. And that's fine. That's completely fine. Uh, it's not locked up or anything like that. You know, it's installed all the packages and everything, and so pretty much almost done installing CentOS at this point. Only have a couple more things to do. Boop, boop, boop. I don't know why it sits at this point for so long. I think it's preparing to go to the next steps. cry if this video doesn't work. I think this is like the fifth, yeah, fifth or sixth time I've recorded the videos thus far. One time I didn't record. And that video I uploaded that was messed up. I just haven't had any uh, very good luck thus far.
I don't like doing the videos in these small chunks either because, you know, like uh, I want to talk about stuff, but I'm not sure if I'm going to talk about it in the other videos now. Before, before I knew everything I wanted to say, now I'm all messed up. Oy, this takes forever. Oh, there we go. Finally. So it's just finishing up, wrapping itself up. should be able to do a reboot here in a minute and reboot into our system alright cool so at this point it's installed let me see actually disconnected the drive for me. So now we're booting into CentOS for the first time. It's bringing up our, uh, our network interface because we said for it to do that. during the install. Loading up a bunch of services and things like that. We'll go over all that. What happens when you boot a system up. Which is kind of starting to change. Okay, so welcome forward. License information. I, I've I wonder what happens if you say no. I mean, it's already installed on your system. Does it... Hmm. See, this is why having uh, VMs is a good thing. You can go through the install and then hit no just to find out. The other day I, uh, <clears throat> I had a server and I actually... Uh, I've never in my life done a uh, rm space dash rf uh, slash. I've always... Uh, uh, th uh, basically that uh, removes every file on the file system uh, I've, I've never done it and so I, I had a, a server I was on a server and I decided to try it and I did it and it didn't allow me to do it and I was root which is basically the administrative user you can do pretty much anything it didn't allow me to do it it said uh, I needed to specify a flag to the command so I specified the flag and I removed every file on the file system and then I was sitting there and I typed in reboot well it removed the command so I typed in power off it removed the command everything was removed so I had to physically go over and turn the machine off or reset the machine cool stuff to do if you have a VM uh, okay here we're gonna do everything is root really doesn't matter um, later we'll be doing network logins but uh, right now everything's gonna be root so um, yeah so it doesn't matter just hit forward it's gonna say you know didn't set up a user account yep that's fine uh, synchronize your your uh, time over the network NTP server okay it's not gonna allow me to do K dump I don't have enough uh, memory but if you can enable it if you don't have enough memory, don't worry about it. it. But if you do have enough memory, enable it because it's something we're going to be covering um, in later videos. So, but yeah, I can't enable it on this uh, system. That's fine. And hit finish. And first boot is done. And we now have a fresh uh, 
install CentOS. Yep, it's saying I'm logged in as root. That's totally fine. I want to be that. Now, go up here, click on Applications, click System Tools, hit Terminal, and do yum dash y update. And that's just going to grab a bunch of uh, reposit, uh, well, packages. And it's going to update basically uh, everything that's installed on your system that has updates out there. Wow, so it's grabbing a bunch of stuff. And that's going to run. Uh, shouldn't take too long. And uh, let that run. And you've got a system now. Um, after that's done running, we'll reboot. So, all right. So now that Yum is finally done doing its uh, update, reboot your machine, and we can do that by just typing in reboot. And we're doing that because Yum, <coughs> or at least in my case, and most likely in your case, installed a new kernel. So we want to boot into the kernel that was just installed. So we are running in that. And we have one last thing to do before this video is done. So here, hit, the, hit a key right here. And that's the old kernel, and that's the new updated kernel. So there we go. Let it boot up. Shouldn't take too long. <clears throat> okay. So as soon as this boots up, God, as soon as this boots up, you are going to want to log in, root, and the password you specified, and you are going to want to go up here to Applications, System Tools, Terminal, okay? and type in egrep single quote parentheses bmx or svm slash proc slash cpu info if nothing comes back at this point you're going to follow the virtual box video if it does anything like this okay and comes back with a bunch of junk like this then you're going to want to follow the KBM video so move on to the virtual box video if it does this and the KBM video if it does this and I will see you in that video